everybody and welcome to our next podcast which is going to focus on all things accommodation here at AIT. Today I am delighted to be joined by Vice President of the Students' Union, Mary. Hi Mary, how are you today? I'm good Claire, how are you getting on? I'm great, thanks. So Mary, today we're going to focus on all things accommodation here at AIT as I said so I think the first kind of obvious question is if anyone is watching who is thinking of studying us here in September how do they go about organizing accommodation for the next academic year? Yeah and um, so it's kind of it's basically very straightforward so you'd get in contact with the student union so at the minute I'm the vice president of the student union so I'd help everyone any accommodation issues looking for accommodation and um, so there is our we have our website which is www.aitsu.ie and there's a section just on the front page as accommodation and if you go into that there's a list of the student apartments list of student houses and a list of the digs and self-care and digs so that's okay. probably the easiest way to get through it okay perfect and is that what kind of you would give as a brief breakdown of accommodation here at AIT so is there private um, accommodation is there AIT campus accommodation. Do you want to give us a little bit of an insight for, yeah. for anyone that might be watching? So um, all accommodation in Athlone at the minute is private accommodation. So the college doesn't have any on-campus accommodation or they don't own any. So all leases you'd be heading into would be for private landlords. And um, so we would assist you with any issues you'd have with landlords or leases or tenants or other tenants as well. Um, but the college don't own the accommodation themselves. Um, however, most of the accommodation is actually very near the college. Nearly all the student apartments are like at most a 10 minute walking distance. Um, most of the houses are kind of in the, the, the housing estates just across the road. And even the digs, uh, most of them would be kind of very close to the college. If not, it might be on the bus or something like that. And um, so even though it is not by the college, it, they're so close to the college. It's not too big an issue. Okay, brilliant. So you have great links developed with all of these private landlords throughout that loan. So it makes it easier for students to make the transition if they are moving away from home. Yeah, definitely. So Perfect. most of the landlords, we kind of definitely with the student apartments anyway, um, they usually, we'd be usually on contact with them throughout the years, most years, if anyone's having issues or if anyone's leaving or looking to get in and stuff. And then with the houses as well, a lot of them are landlords who have been with the student union uh, registered with the student union for a good few years there's you know so we'd have a good relationship and we would kind of know um the houses and where about they are and what the landlords are like as well so it's good okay brilliant brilliant i think that's a great sense of security because i know when you are moving away from home you can be quite anxious about the big move so yeah. it's nice to know that if they are maybe a little bit nervous about moving into a house or if things maybe do go wrong or they're not unhappy happy in their house they can always contact the SU and we can always help them out there yeah. throughout the whole year yeah definitely that's what we're here for so um the vice president um for welfare um would help with accommodation issues a lot um so if there's any issues you can contact the union if the, the vice president isn't there just leave your details or anything like that um but you know everyone in the union is there to help and, you know it is we'd help you as much as we can we'll Go through everything with you if you wanted to make a complaint or anything how you go about that if you just kind of want to know um you know general kind of accommodation rights and stuff like that we go through that with you as well so if you are nervous at all you can contact us and that's what we're there for brilliant brilliant very so another question as well that i think is an obvious question is what type of room types is there within student accommodation here in athlone so is there single double do you want to talk us a little bit through that kind of side of accommodation yeah, um, so in a lot of the student apartments, um, they would be mostly kind of single rooms, twin rooms. There would be a few double rooms, but they're kind of mostly single and twin rooms. Um, so within kind of the apartments and stuff, kind of a going rate for a single room could be anywhere between kind of 90 euro to kind of um, 110 or 115 euro a week. And um, just depending on the apartment itself and what they include in the rent and things like that. A twin room is usually um, a, a bit cheaper because you're, you're obviously sharing a room um, with another person. Um, the rates can change kind of a little bit, whether it's en suite or non en suite, but it's not a huge difference either. Um, double rooms, um, when they do have them in the apartments, they could be, they're obviously a little bit more expensive than single rooms, but there's not a huge difference in that either. And um, then kind of going into houses, most houses would have single rooms. Um, and kind of the average rate in a house um, 
shared with other students is roughly around 80 to 90 a week. Um, so kind of that kind of average price for a single room and a double could be like 90 to 100 a week. Um, just depending on the house as well, but that's kind of an average price for you. Um, and then kind of going into digs, which is where you're living in an owner occupied house. Um, you're just basically renting a room and they can vary a bit. Um, depending on some would supply dinners and breakfasts and stuff and some wouldn't. So if um, they could vary from kind of like usually similar to the houses and um, kind of 80, 90, maybe even 100 a week. And um, the ones that are kind of up um, at the higher rate would usually include meals and stuff. Um, and usually all bills are included in them as well. So they're kind of a cheaper option in some ways as well. So that's kind of a quick rundown, but um, yeah, that'd be about an average. Yeah, yeah, that was a great breakdown of like, there's twins, there's singles, there's doubles, which are in yeah. maybe the student comp complexes, but then they're also in the houses, it slightly differs between single and double as well. And then you also have the yeah. digs options also. And another thing that we might get asked a little bit as well, when we're, myself and Dan are on the road, Mary, is, is there deposits needed when you are booking accommodation here in Athlone? Yeah, so the majority of places would require deposit. Um, so definitely with the student apartments anyway, they usually would require a deposit by a certain date. And um, that kind of varies as well between student apartments. Some would take um, kind of a, a full amount for electricity in with the deposit. Um, and it just depends there. With houses as well, um, the majority of landlords would take deposits. I think it's just for their own security um, as well. And um, so a lot of them would kind of go on the basis of, of like a month's rent for um, mm -hmm. their deposits. So depending on what they're charging per week, it's usually so I'd usually see around kind of 300, you know, around on average for a deposit. But some of them could be a little bit higher, a little bit lower, depending on what the landlord likes themselves. And um, kind of just one piece of advice that I would say is, um, especially if you're maybe dealing in cash with a landlord, just get a receipt for your deposit and stuff, just for proof of yourself. Um, and I think that's an important thing as well. And um, just with deposits and everything like that, if you are kind of signing a lease as well, um, I just know what I get this from students. Um, if you're signing a lease or a contract with the landlord for say the nine months usually it is, um, you know, you are in that contract for nine months so if you do need to leave for whatever reason or um you know you might just be moving to another house um just to keep that in mind you know um you are in a contract with them and you know you can offer to find somebody to take your room from them and depending on the landlord usually they're happy with that so just to keep that in mind and even if you don't have a lease or a contract um you do have to kind of give as usually roughly around 28 days notice that you're leaving um, so just to keep that in mind during the year, if you do leave or you want to move to another house or move in with friends or whatever it is, mm -hmm. um, just remember that as well. Yeah, I think that's a great piece of advice and something we do often get asked as well is about lease agreements and how do they work and this, that and the other. So that was a great breakdown if anyone might be nervous that maybe if they want to move in with their friends or something, it's a nice piece of advice to know there that to have your own, actually watch your own back when you are getting involved in the lease agreement that you are signing it as you said. And just one last thing I'm going to ask you about Mary to finish up is you, know, you mentioned earlier about bills. So usually within houses and student accommodation, are bills included in rent? or does it differ per uh, place? Yeah, so um, usually kind of with the student apartments, and um, like I said before, when you're paying your deposit, um, they usually would take kind of lump sum amounts for either electricity and heating. And that would usually kind of do you for the, the whole nine months or however long you um, have signed the contract for. And um, with houses, it can vary a bit. Um, some would um, have their weekly or monthly rent and they might have heating included in it or a lot of them would usually have kind of bins and um, internet and all that included in their rent. Um, and some of them might have heating. Usually electricity is nearly always separate within houses. And um, a lot of houses I would have seen um, in Athlone for students would have the kind of pay-as-you-go um, electricity system. So um, usually kind of landlords would either take that over themselves and go, oh, if you pay me, you know, 50 euro, for each for this semester that should you, do you until Christmas so and then some might just leave it to the students themselves to either put it in as they go if they want to put in a tenner a week um, and it's usually really simple to do because at the shop just up the road from the college and um, 
would take credit for that and um so that's kind of usually a way it happens with digs um usually nearly all the cases i've seen with digs most of them would have bills included in them because it is um like a family home and they're renting a room so they'd be usually using the same heat and electricity things mm -hmm. like that so um in that kind of way they're usually a bit cheaper like you wouldn't be paying usually any extra for your heating electricity or your internet or anything like that um but um yeah usually with houses it can it can vary from landlord to landlord so um, just the landlord would say it themselves anyway so if you're signing the contract or you're just unsure i'd say just double check with them um but they usually are very straightforward with what way they're doing it okay mary that was brilliant i think yeah. you gave a really good piece of advice there as well is definitely read the contracts and if there is mm. anyone watching for example who might have maybe looked at the student accommodation off campus the private ones i think you mentioned there a really important point that if the deposit is a little bit more expensive than what they were anticipating that maybe the bills are included so it's really important to read the fine print and not be not be deterred from something like a number and just make sure you know what you're getting yourself into it's really important to do lots of research and figure out what mm. is best for you financially and obviously location wise is obviously really important as well and all of the advice yeah. that you can give they can contact you straight away through email through your own email which is what mary yeah so the vice president's email is su vice so s-u-v-i-c-e at a-i-t dash i-e so that's probably the best email to get through because usually it gets sent to me either way um, and anything kind of accommodation wise will help you as much as we can and um, there's obviously so much we can do as well but we'll you know help you every step of the way and we'll help you if you, we, you need to be referred on to the residential tenancy board or anything like that we will assist you with anything like that so don't be too worried but we'll kind of give you the best advice as we know and um yeah basically don't hesitate Brilliant. to get in contact with us yeah Brilliant. So if anyone watching has any questions, definitely drop Mary an email and she will reply ASAP or even if simply drop us a DM on Instagram and we will refer you to Mary also. So thank yep. you so much, Mary, for joining us. This was a really good podcast into all things accommodation at AIT. I know this can be quite a nervous move for someone that might be moving away from home, but you gave lots of information there about room types pricing, deposits, all the really important things and the information that you definitely need when you're doing your research for accommodation for making the transition to third level. So thank you so much, Mary. Yeah, no problem. Thanks so much for having me. We really appreciate you for getting involved. Have a lovely summer and we'll speak to you soon. Thanks. Bye.